On today's Maker Mashup, we're going to create one of these really cool security cameras for only $10. So today we're going to cover how to make one of these little security cameras and this one I 3D printed myself and I'm using an ESP32 cam. This is a very, very small development board with a webcam that's integrated into it and it only costs $10. So it's a very inexpensive way for you to add a security camera to your house or in our case, we're going to use it for our 3D printer. Octoprint gives you the ability to uh, have a webcam and a lot of people use USB webcams, but what you find out is when you have multiple printers or you want multiple webcams, that the USB bus actually runs out of bandwidth. Now, if you go with this sort of IP camera, which is what we're gonna to build today, this IP camera, you can put almost any number of these on your network and view it with Octoprint. So you can view it remotely from different angles. You can use different printers, which is what I'm going to be using. Uh, you can do this for security cameras. It's really a great way to build an inexpensive camera for your house. And we'll, we're gonna cover that today. We're gonna use this cam and then we're gonna 3D print it and assemble it. I'll be covering a couple of ways to power it so we can power it with the printer power itself, which is a 24 volt printer. And then the other way we're gonna power it is via USB. And that gives us the ability to use one of those batteries that you recharge your phone with so you can actually make this cam mobile. So let's get to work. Aside from some basic wires, we're gonna need ourselves just a few parts. We're gonna need one USB to serial adapter. We're gonna need an ESP32 cam, one micro USB breakout, and a five volt regulator. You only need the micro USB or the regulator, depending on how you want to assemble this project. Links for all of these parts are included in the description. The fastest way to get this project running is to simply take this breakout from the USB and solder two leads on it. The leads I'm soldering on here already come with the connectors on the other end, and I'm just soldering in the ground and the five volt power. And once this is done, this is ready to install to the ESP32. The other advantage is that if you use this USB connector, you can use one of the phone batteries that you use to charge your cell phone, and then the ESP32 cam becomes mobile. If you're going to hook this to your 3D printer like I'm planning to do, what you're going to need to do is adjust the screw right here, and that's going to change the voltage of the output, so that way you can step it down from 24 volts down to the 5 volts that the ESP32 uses. To adjust the voltage, all we're gonna do here is hook one end of the regulator up to the 24 volts on the 3D printer, and then we're gonna use the screw to adjust this to 5.2 volts. The ESP32 can have some power dropout problems, and 5.2 is a good number, and the internal ESP32 regulator can keep up with that voltage, and you'll get a good quality uh, picture out of that. So now we're gonna go ahead and solder on these different leads. These are gonna be two for the output and two for the input. Once this is done, then we're gonna crimp on just a couple of connectors, and then this will be ready so that way we can hook this up to the ESP32 cam as well. These are just standard motherboard connectors, and we're gonna use this crimper here to just attach our leads. These leads just crimp down into here, and I really recommend picking up one of these uh, crimpers. They're great for working with 3D printers and a lot of other electronics. I've added a link to it in the description. We're now going to take another one of these breakouts. You can use the same one if you have it wired up already. And we're going to take one of these breakout boards and attach it to the breadboard. And we're going to do this so that way we can program the ESP32 cam. The first step is to wire up these grounds. We're gonna take the ground from the input power and add it to one of these ground strips. And then we're gonna take another ground wire and take it from the second pin from the top here, which is the ground. And we're gonna attach that to our ground strip as well. One last ground wire is gonna go onto our cable to our serial to USB converter. So just plug one of these in and I've got links for these cables in the description. Now we're gonna take two more leads and we're gonna plug them into the RX and TX pins 
that are going to go from the serial to the USB converter. And then we're going to plug these into the board, into the RX and TX pins on the board itself. Now we need to attach the positive power cable and we're going to attach this to the top pin here on the left of the board and that's our 5 volt power. Now this last pin we just need temporarily. You'll see there's one that's marked GND and then the pin right next to it. And what this will do is put the uh, ESP32 cam into a programming mode. So this is only temporary while we program it. Then after that, you'll remove that and then the ESP32 will function normally. The last step here is to attach our ground wire. Then we're gonna go ahead and attach the RX and TX pins that we attach to the board to the serial to USB programmer. Once that's complete, you'll need to plug it into a USB port, and then you'll also have to power the micro USB with five volts as well. Both of them need to be plugged in in order for this to work. Now that we have the hardware assembled, the next step is to burn the firmware onto the ESP32. You're gonna to wanna to load up the Arduino IDE, and you can download this firmware directly from my website, and links for that are in the description. The, what you have to do here is simply change a few values. The first one is going to be the device name. You want to set that to whatever camera number or cam name you want to have on your network. And then you also want to change your SSID and password to your local wireless network. Once you've got that complete, then you're just going to want to compile and send the firmware over to the ESP32 itself. With the serial monitor up, if you hit reset, you should see here that it is waiting for download. This means that you're ready to start the upload process. So if you click the compile option, once it's done compiling, then you can just click upload and you should get your firmware all set up on there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about how we're gonna find out what the IP address is from anywhere on your network. The code I wrote for this should broadcast that name, so we're going to just want to go ahead and execute a DNS SD on Windows 10 with a dash B option, and you'll see there to show ESP32 CAM01 with a dot local domain. And then if you execute a DNS dash SD dash C with ESP32 CAM dot local, you can see on my network, it is 192.168.0.154. So this is a quick way for you to find out how and where it is on your network without having to look at the serial output of the device itself. Now you just go ahead and fire up a web browser. And if you go to that web address 154, you'll see here that you can access a little web page and you can see a webcam stream of the webcam itself. So we've got a working ESP32 cam. And then we're just gonna go ahead and copy these values into Octoprint itself. Since I'm gonna be using this for Octoprint, what I'm gonna do here is copy the values from the ESP32 cam web page, the test page here, and we're gonna copy this over into Octoprint. So I've gone to the stream page here, and we're just gonna copy that and go into Octoprint. And then we're gonna go over here to the webcam and time lapse, paste this in, and click test. And you can see here we've got a working webcam now, and it's using the ESP32 cam. Now we're gonna to wanna to repeat the process here for the time-lapse recording. This is for snapshots. And we're just gonna capture this value here. And it is on port 80. So then we're gonna submit the test here and you can see our snapshot works just fine. Once you've printed the 3D parts, the rest of this is pretty simple. You can always create your own enclosure, but with the enclosure that I built, you just press in the ESP32 and you can see there the camera comes out the front and there's a hole there for the light that comes on with the ESP32. It has an embedded light. And then there's this retaining clip. This just presses in and that holds the ESP32 so it doesn't move out of there. And then once that's done, the first two pins at the top here are the five volt and the ground. Just inserting those pins in there is all you need to do to go ahead and have this ready to go. 
At the bottom here, you'll see there's a small hole and this takes an M3 screw and this holds everything together. If you were doing this with your five volt regulator for your 3D printer, you would just simply hot glue that five volt regulator on the inside there on that back cup and then go ahead and run those leads to your 3D printer. This holds everything together and you have one complete ESP32 cam. So if you're gonna power this from a power supply on your 3D printer, you're just gonna to wanna to hook it up just like this, where you can see the two leads, one to positive and one to negative. And then that will flow through that five volt regulator for your ESP32 cam. So I think you'll agree, putting together one of these ESP32 cams is a pretty simple process. You get a wireless IP camera and the cost of these is only about $10. If you use the USB style here and don't hook this to your printer, you can actually go ahead and use any of those rechargeable batteries that you use to charge a cell phone and make this a mobile camera. So if you need a portable security camera temporarily, this is a great option and the price is very inexpensive. You can access it across your local network and from any web browser. So I think it's a really great solution and it's very economical. A lot of these cameras today cost $40 or more and the quality is not much better than the one that you're gonna get from an ESP32 cam. So with that, this is gonna be the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please mash that like button and leave your comments below. We'd love to hear back from you. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you get notifications of our new videos. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.